remember the three lepers in the Bible. The scripture tells us the story of three lepers. You remember them? The book of Kings, right? Elisha prophesied that God was going to turn things around so that the poverty and the drought that was affecting the land of Israel would stop. But as Elisha prophesied, the Bible says that the officers of the government, officers of the king, did not believe him. And one was so arrogant to speak in the presence of Elisha and said, even if God should open all the windows of heaven, this thing is not possible. Elisha said, by this time tomorrow, a bag of rice that you now buy for 1,000 Hong Kong dollars. By this time tomorrow, it will be sold for 50 Hong Kong dollars. And the man said, you are a con man. This thing cannot happen, even if God opens the windows of heaven. And Elisha said to him, God is not going to open the windows of heaven. But you're going to see this happen, but you're not going to eat it. You will not be part of this blessing. Hallelujah. And I said to you, God is going to move people around you. God will move circumstances around you. God will shake up things so that things will happen for your favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the feet of the three lepers that were ostracized, one day they started to march out of the territory of Israel. They said, we don't want to stay here. There is no food in the land. If we stay here, we will die. Our family members are no more bringing food for us. Nobody is bringing food for us anymore. We better go to another city. Let's go to another country. Let's leave the territory of Israel. Unknown to them, the Most High has made their feet heavy and strong. And the Bible says, these three lepers that can barely walk so slow because, number one, they were sick. Number two, they were malnourished and hungry. And so they were shaking and were taking their steps slowly. But God magnified their feet so that the sound of each of their steps were sounding like a rushing many horses. So that the camp of the enemy ran at the sound of the feet of three letters. Sometimes God allows difficulties to come to us so that we call on him and we cry to him. And usually when we cry to him and our cry comes to his ear, he performs wonders. That's why he's called God of Wonders. Somebody say God of Wonders. God of wonders. Can you say it strongly? God of, wonders. God of Wonders. I want us to discuss a topic that I titled, You Are a Gatekeeper. You are a, a Gatekeeper. You are a Gatekeeper. Before I continue, I again want to make the announcement concerning our WhatsApp channel. The channel is called uh, Transformed by the Word. Transformed by... Can you say it with me? Transformed by the Word. Hallelujah. That's what that WhatsApp channel is called. Please, I want all of you to be in that WhatsApp channel so that you can always receive an editorial that is done. In every week, we have sometimes on daily basis an editorial, which is done by Minister Uche, our pastor, releases that word. And I go through this word that he always posts there. They are very instructive and they bless. And I want you to be part of it. Can we
we just bow our head for short prayer. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Father, your eyes are on, on all your creatures that you created, so I know that you're watching over me. Father, you are watching over us. There is not a time that any of us are in any way lost in your presence. You are always watching over us. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your glory in this place. And thank you for what you will do in our lives. Father, as we fellowship together, I pray that your word will strengthen us. Open our eyes and place us on your rock that we will live as you have appointed us. We give you praise and glory in Yahushua's mighty name and we all say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Next week, for all those that did not participate in our anointing service, I will bring back that same oil so that those that did not participate will have a time to participate in the anointed service. But my topic for today is, are you a gatekeeper? Maybe I should rephrase it and say, you are a gatekeeper. You are. I can ask it as a question does not mean whether you are or you are not. But, Asking it as a question is a reminder to us if you are functioning as a gatekeeper as you should. But you are a gatekeeper. Every single one of us, we are gatekeepers. Now, you have the ushers that are standing by the door and they open and shut the door. If you were downstairs, you see that the ushers open and shut the door, as the case may be. A gatekeeper is one that stands at the door and watches for entrance and for exit. A gatekeeper is a watchman. A gatekeeper is so important that a gatekeeper can determine many things. A gatekeeper can determine the peace of the people inside a gatekeeper can determine the safety of the people in that house. A gatekeeper can determine who comes in and who goes out. A gatekeeper can determine what comes in and what goes out. A gatekeeper can also determine who challenges and who dares not. There is the kind of a gatekeeper you will have and people are not going to come near your door. Hallelujah. There was this time I was passing by a house in Lagos, in Nigeria. I didn't know there was a mighty door in that house. And you know how you are walking and you begin to go near to fence, you know? I, I was trying to, you know, be careful for the dirt on the road. The road was not very good. So I didn't want to step into muddy waters and all that. So I walked close to the fence just to evade that mud. And all of a sudden, a mighty door <laughs> roared from the inside the fence while I came near to the gate. Immediately, this door roared. I jumped from there into the same mud I was in. <laughs> because the door was so huge and the roar was so loud. A mighty gatekeeper. There are some dogs, you see them. Even if you want to see somebody inside that house, you say, uh, please, I will wait outside. Come outside. Let's talk outside. Because the dog is intimidating. Right? Hallelujah. Have you seen some of these dogs that the police officers use? Even the military. There was one that was given uh, some kind of award in Ukraine. 
this dog was able to go save a soldier that was about to die in the war front. Drag the soldier from where the bullets were raining down and took the soldier out of danger. Isn't that amazing? Have you seen some of those dogs that lead the blind? Those dogs are not only trained to lead them, but to defend them. Yeah. If you approach that blind man and try to take anything, yeah. you will be shocked what that dog will do to you. Yeah. <laughs> that dog is a mighty keeper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One single reason why the Messiah was so angry with Cain was because Cain asked, Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? That made the Most High very angry with him. But Cain made that statement because Cain knew what he had done. I want you to say to your neighbor, neighbor, yeah. you are a gatekeeper. You are a gatekeeper. Come with me to the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 9. 1 Chronicles chapter 9. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 9. We will read from verse number 19. You are a gatekeeper. I'm going to preach very quick so that we can pray. We've got a couple of prayers to do, maybe one or two. You are a gatekeeper. First Chronicles chapter 9 from verse number 19. I have a translation that is very interesting that I would like to read from. It is NLT, New Living Translation. But it is the same thing with this, uh, to an extent, but I like to read it because it makes very clear meaning. Verse 19, I read, Shalom was the son of Korah, a descendant of Abiasaf from the clan of Korah. He and his relatives, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the sanctuary, just as their ancestors had guarded the tabernacle in the camp of the Lord. Verse 20. Pineas, son of Aliaza, had been in charge of the gatekeepers in earlier times and the Lord had been with him. And later Zachariah, son of Meshalamiah, was responsible for guarding the entrance to the tabernacle. In all, there were 212 gatekeepers in those days, and they were listed according to the genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel, the seer, had appointed their ancestors because they were reliable men. These gatekeepers and their descendants by their divisions were responsible for guarding the entrance to the house of the Lord when that house was a tent. 24. The gatekeepers were stationed on all four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their relatives in the villages came regularly to share their duties for seven day periods. The four chief gatekeepers, all Levites, were trusted officials, for they were responsible for the rooms and the treasuries at the house of God. They would spend the night around the house of God since it was their duty to guard it and to open the gates every morning. Some of the gatekeepers were assigned to care for the various articles used in worship. They checked them in and out to avoid any loss. Others were responsible for the furnishings, the items in the sanctuary, and the supplies, such as choice flour, wine, oil, olive oil, frankincense, and spices. But it was the priests who blended the spices. Malatia and Levite, the oldest of the, of the son of Shalom, the Korahite was entrusted with baking. Hallelujah. Was entrusted with baking. The bread used in the offerings. And some members of the clan of Kohath were in charge of 
preparing the bread to be set on the table each Sabbath day. Verse number 23. The musicians... 33, yes. Sad, son. The musicians, all prominent Levites, lived at the temple. They were exempt from other responsibilities since they were on duty at all hours. All these men lived in Jerusalem. They were the heads of the Levites' families and were listed as prominent leaders in the genealogical records. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I hope this very reading was very clear. Right? Was it clear enough? It was clear enough? <laughs> it wasn't clear enough? You want me to read it again? Hallelujah. You are a gatekeeper. Say to your neighbor for me again, neighbor. A gatekeeper. Gatekeepers are important people in our lives. Hallelujah. I want to read it again from verse number 19. Alright? From verse 19, I want you to listen. I'm going to take it verse by verse. So that I can end it quickly. He says, Shalom was the son of Korah, descendant of Abiyasa from the clan of Korah. He and his relatives, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the sanctuary, just as their ancestors had guarded the tabernacle of the Lord, Shalom, and his brothers. The Bible says their responsibility was to guard the entrance to the house of the Lord. The entrance. Somebody say the entrance. the entrance. Come on one more time. Say the entrance. The entrance. He says, Shalom, the son of Korah, the son of Abiyasaf, the son of Korah, and his brethren of the house of his father, the Korahites, were over the work of the service, keepers of the gates of the tabernacle, and their fathers, being over the host of the Lord, were keepers of the entry. Entrance. Keepers of the entrance. Last time, if you remember our discussion, we said every human being has got entrances into his life. As a person, there are entrances to your life. As a family, there is an entrance to your family. As business, if you are running an organization, there is an entrance to the organization. Hallelujah. As a nation, as a city, there are entrances to the city. For example, in Hong Kong, we did something some time ago in Hong Kong. We went to the four points of entrances in Hong Kong. Those that are officially recognized and some that are not officially recognized, but spiritually is an entrance. There are gates. Anywhere you see a city erect a mighty statue, it means that place is a gate. That place is a point of entrance. It may not be officially recognized by all the citizens, but spiritually it is a gate. That's why there is a God standing there. Hallelujah. That's why you have a mighty statue standing there. Spiritually is a gate. And sacrifices are performed there because they recognize that that place is an entrance. So, as a person, there are entrances into our lives. First, number one entrance that you must recognize is your mind. Somebody say mind. mind. Your mind is an entrance. In fact, your mind is so powerful that even when nobody is saying anything, your mind can be hearing and be receiving from spiritual entities, from things that happen without your knowledge. Because many things are stored in your unconscious and subconscious level as a person. So your mind is always having things flow in. Things you saw in the dream can begin to try to penetrate into your mind in order to establish themselves in your life. So your mind is the first gate that you must be mindful of. Things that were said by somebody, maybe a, a, a friend, a pastor, a, a, a doctor, somebody somewhere that told you something. It may not even concern you, but the way it was said can be received by your mind and established as a stronghold within you and begins to haunt you. So your mind is a gate, but you are the possessor of your mind. Hallelujah. 
So can you say with me, I am the possessor of my mind. Therefore, I am in charge of my mind. And that's true. You are in charge of your mind. You determine what you think, what you deliberate on, what you stay on in your mind. Irrespective of how you feel. Irrespective of how you feel. One of the greatest trainings that they give to marine soldiers. How many of you know marine soldiers, right? You know about marines, right? The greatest training that they give them is not to dwell on their pain. That's why they beat them, they suffocate them, they drown them in water, they hit them with different kinds of things, they make them go hungry for a long time, they leave them to get sick, they even inflict wounds on them and allow them to go through pain. The essence is that in case they are in the war front and they receive a bullet, they will not just stay there and die because they receive the bullet. As long as they can still move, they can carry that bullet and go home. Yeah. Irrespective of what is happening, they may lose a leg, but they will go home. They may lose an arm, but they will go home. They are not going to drown in their pain and die. Their minds have been conditioned to receive their pain and deal with it. And not allow their pain to destroy them. Hallelujah. As a gatekeeper, you must watch over your mind. The second is your ear. Second very important gate in your life is your ear. Because you can't close it. I'm telling you the ones that you cannot even stop. Whether you like it or not, you will hear. Your ear will never say, I'm tired of hearing. <laughs> your ear will continue to hear. Both good things and bad things. Negative things and positive things. And so, the training you must give yourself is how to hear things that are not so good and shave it off. Don't run because you have things that are not so good. Many people have left their, their positions that God gave them, where God has placed them for them to grow and be a blessing, and left it and run because they heard negative things. Can I tell you, even if you run to the moon, you will hear a negative thing there. I was reading in the paper that the discovery, discovery is a... Uh, some kind of mission that America sent to the Mars. Mm, yes. And they said, oh, they just saw a plastic debris in the Mars. And they're wondering who took the plastic debris to the Mars. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> How did the plastic debris get to the Mars? If it is moon, they will say, oh, maybe one of these guys were jumping and, and walking and left, you know, the plastic debris or something broke there. But nobody has been to the Mars, according to what we know. So how come that this discovery, small machine like that, that is using video to walk around the Mars, saw a plastic debris? What am I trying to say? Even if they send you to the Mars, you're going to hear a negative news there. <laughs> It does not matter where you go. Why? Because your ear will not stop hearing. Your ear will continue to hear both good news and bad news. Negative and positive. But if you are matured enough, if you are a gatekeeper, you decide what you hear and keep and what you hear and trash. It is not everything you take to your house that you leave in your house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some things can go with you to your house. But when you go to your house, you go to the dustbin and do what? Trash it. The fact that that thing came into your ear does not mean it should stay with you. You have received it in your ear, but you can trash it. Your ear is an important gate. Don't keep everything you hear. Some of them, you must trash them. As long as they are negative, when they are not going to add anything good or positive to your life, if they are not going to strengthen your faith, 
if they are not going to make you a better prayer warrior, if they will not make you a wiser believer, if they are not going to make you a strong Christian, garbage it, throw it in the trash, and let it go. But your ear will never stop hearing. Whether you like it or not. Even if you live here and go to Philippines, you are still going to hear a story what is happening here. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I can tell you now, you bought a plane and go to America and go as far as the border of, uh, 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 where is the coldest place in America? <laughs> Alaska. Somebody will definitely send you a text message. <laughs> Have you heard what Pastor I said? <laughs> This is life, no matter where you go. The next important is your eyes. You can't close your eyes and walk the street, you know. You are going to step on someone. Right? No matter what, your eyes must be open. But don't keep whatever you see. Do not dwell on everything you see. And don't be too shocked by anything you see. In fact, the Bible tells us not to be shocked. See them keep moving. Don't say, eh. <laughs> In those days in Italia, you know, the capital of Italy in those days, they do drama just to steal from tourists. So they stay in the tourist area. And when tourists are passing by, these people will begin to do different kinds of drama just to get your attention. Mm -hmm. So some tourists are dragging their bag. And when they see some of those dramas, they will be captivated to look. Mm -hmm. And some people, while they are looking, will leave their bag and go, ah! Oh. Ooh. <laughs> eh? <laughs> while you are doing that, the guys that are set there to monitor those that are no more taking care of their bags will simply come by your side and grab your bag and go. By the time you finish watching the drama, you now look for your bag. Ooh, my bag! Your bag is gone. Hallelujah. Satan is playing the same game on us. Satan anoints people to come to us and play dramas. They dramatize different kinds of things. And while we abuse it, dwelling on that drama, Satan will steal our joy, steal our peace, steal our grace. And by the time you know what is going on, you will now be asking yourself, am I still a Christian? Is the Holy Spirit still with me? What is happening to me? You were too busy watching the drama that Satan was playing. Not all dramas are good. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't become a believer. That's the third gate. The last gate. And this gate, you have control over it. It's your mouth. Please, control your mouth. The Bible says, be quick to hear because you can't control your ear. Right? But be slow to, be slow to speak. Because what you say can be a blessing or can be a curse. Yes. I was telling my children, I said to them, God created this world and made it a boomerang ball. Anything you release will bounce on the wall and come back to you. It is either it comes today or it comes a month time or it comes in a year time or in 20 years time or in 30 years time. But whatever you throw, each time you pick up a stone and throw at somebody, you're going to get it back. Yeah. It will bounce and it is coming back to you. So be careful what stone you throw. So instead of throwing things that will wound and destroy, please, throw love, throw peace, throw forgiveness, throw endurance, throw patience, throw a hug. Right? So that when it comes back to you, you will be happy to receive it. Hallelujah. You don't want to throw something that when it comes back, you will say, I am not here, this is not my house. <laughs> and the angel will say, no, this is your house, you are here. <laughs> Somebody say, 
Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says these men were gatekeepers. Now, every gatekeeper is a trusted person. Somebody say trust. 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 One more time. Trust. trust. God trusts you. That's why God has made you a gatekeeper over yourself. Because first, you are a gatekeeper over yourself. You know what the Bible says? If you can't take care of yourself, how can you take care of another? If you are on the plane, they say if you have a child, take care of yourself first. Before you take care of the child. The Bible says, if a man cannot take care of his family, how can he take care of the church? Both as a pastor, as an elder, as a deacon, it's all the same regulation, the same requirement. If you're going to be a deacon, an elder, a pastor, a bishop, it's the same. Same requirement, same demand. Take care of yourself before you want to take care of another. Jesus says, thou hypocrite. You want to take out a small sun in somebody's eye, yeah. but you have a big plank covering your eye. He says, how can you see? So he says, take care of yourself. In other words, you are first a gatekeeper for yourself before another person. But God trusts you. God trusted you so much, trusted us so much that he gave us his spirit. By His Holy Spirit, we are able to keep the gate, both of ourselves and for others around us. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So I want you to know that God trusts you. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. God, God. God is not your enemy. God is not your enemy. Never ever you think that God is your enemy at any time. That's not true. God is in fact. When you sing that song, I am a friend of God, you yeah. should remember. Yes. God is not your enemy. It's a matter of truth. You are your own enemy. Yeah. <laughs> yourself. Yourself yeah. is your enemy. Yes. Because yourself determines your thought, your imaginations. Yeah. And that determines the action you carry out. Yeah. You are your own enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So every gatekeeper is a trusted person. Now say to your neighbor, neighbor, yeah. I trust you. I trust Do you trust me? statement? Yeah. Have you heard it? Yeah. But do you realize it, it, it is not always, you know, reciprocated? Yes. Many times you respect people but they don't give you back that respect. Yeah. Yeah. You give it and they take it and pocket it. <laughs> they say, after all. You get the point? But it is reciprocal. In other words, when somebody shows you a certain kind of kindness, please show it back. Don't take it and go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Don't take it and go. Because respect is reciprocal. The same way trust must be reciprocated. When you go to read about the things that God hates, one of them is breaking an agreement. Breaking trust. Breaking faith. Do you know why the Most High punished Simeon and Levi through the mouth of their father. Simeon and Levi had an agreement not to war with a family. Family of, of Heth, is it? After they raped their sister and they apologized and paid a whole lot of fine and said we will marry her. An agreement was made that all the men in the city must be circumcised. And that agreement was kept. These people all came, both old men and young men. All of them were circumcised. A marriage ceremony was performed. But three days after the circumcision, 
The Bible says Simeon and Levi went in with a sword with some of their friends and killed all those men. The Most High was angry. Why? They broke trust. That covenant was made based on trust. And notice this. Simeon lost his position forever. It was never restored. The only person that was restored was Levi. Because of a great act that Levi did in keeping God's righteousness. But Simeon was never restored. Moses did not restore them. Joshua did not restore them. Samuel did not restore them. Only by the sacrifice of the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, will they be restored. So God is not happy when we break trust. If somebody trusts you on something and agrees with you in something, please keep it according to the agreement. Don't break it. Because God will hold you responsible. Trust. Every gatekeeper must be a trusted person. So if God is going to be with you as a gatekeeper, you must be a trusted person. Now this is about yourself as a person. Now let's move to your employment, your family, everything about you. Your family has got doors that must be guarded. Families suffer because of many reasons. Of course, we know that there will always be war. In case you don't know, there is always war against you and against your family. Whether you know it or you don't know it. Satan is always warring against you. And Satan can use anything. Satan can use spiritual weapons against you. He can also use physical things. You must recognize that there is war, there is affliction planned by the devil against you, against your family, against your children. And you must be a gatekeeper. Tell me, have you ever seen a bank without a gatekeeper? No. Whether there is operation going on or there is no operation, whether they are on holiday or they are not on holiday, there is a gatekeeper. Day and night. Anywhere that there are valuables, there must be a gatekeeper. And can I tell you, there are so much valuables in your life. You are a great treasure. A great treasure that Satan is always shocked when he sees you. You may not know, but you shine. You shine like a wonderful great diamond. That whenever Satan and his devils are looking at you, they wonder why should it be you? The reason why many people attack people spiritually by witchcraft and all that is because when they see the glory of the Most High in your life, they wonder why should it be you? And they attack you. Not because you did anything, but because of who you are, who God has made you. Therefore, you are valuable. Say to your neighbor for me again, neighbor. You are valuable. If you look down on yourself, you make me say, you are valuable. That's why you are having all these attacks. Now, what does that mean? You must be a gatekeeper. If you have valuables and you are not guarding it, you're going to lose it. And you will surely lose it unless you can. Gatekeepers must be people that are smart and they are awake and they are careful. So, in your family, what are the gates that should be kept in your family? The gates of health, the gates of education. The gates of marriages in your family. The gates of the children. The gates of your finances in the family. There are very important gates to keep. The gates of unity in your family. These are all gates 
that you must keep. If you don't keep it, you will suffer loss. You must do your best to find a way to make sure you keep the gate of unity. Keep the gate of peace. Keep the gate of love. Keep the gate of care for one another. Keep the gates. You must keep it. If you fail, you have problems. These are important gates. I am telling you, no matter how much money you say, oh, I don't care about it, at the end you will realize you made an error. Keep these gates in your family, in your employer's house, in your business, in your, with your associates. Keep these gates. They are necessary. As a church, we have gates in this church. Every ministry in this church is a gate. Every single ministry is a gate. As much as it is a body, it has also got gates. Think about it. As a human being, we have gates. As a ministry, we are a combination of different people. So there are gates to be kept. The choir has got their gates that they must protect and keep. The mission have got their gates. The prayer ministry have got their gates. The evangelism mission, the help ministry, the teachers, the children teachers, the dancers, the musicians, there are gates. These people that are recording, the chroniclers, they have got gates to keep. There are gates to keep. And we must become gatekeepers in this ministry transformation assembly. Among the women, there are gates. Among the men, there are gates. Unless we become gatekeepers in the ministry, we are going to be watching the devil steal from us every day. Every day. Every day. Because that there are gates. We must watch what we say because the mouth is a gate. We must watch what we do because our mind is a gate. What does that mean? There is an important story I want to tell you in the Bible. Peter was invited to eat with the Gentiles. The Bible says Peter went. While Peter was eating with these Gentiles, with Apostle Paul, all of a sudden some brethren from Jerusalem came. The Bible says when they came in, Peter felt afraid that they are going to say, ah, Peter, you are eating with Gentiles. And the Bible says, while Peter was sitting and eating, they came in, Peter dropped the food and said, brother, you are welcome. He put his hand in, behind him. He was afraid of what they will say, the criticism that will come. He forgot that some time before, God said to him, I have welcomed them to be part of my family. He was the first man that preached to Gentiles before ever the ministry of Paul kicked off. He forgot all that. Why? He did not guard the gate of his mind. A man with such great anointing, but he forgot to guard the gates of his mind. And he was taken by surprise. It was so obvious that the brother sitting and eating with Peter felt sad. And Paul had to speak up. Paul said, oh, no, 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 P. Brother P, let's keep eating. We are not going to leave the table. Let those that came, if they want to join, let them do what? Join. Guard your mind. Satan can quickly come in. By that action, some of the brothers already felt bad. Be a gatekeeper. Tell your neighbor for me, neighbor. Please be a gatekeeper. Gatekeepers are trusted people. The more you guard the gates, the more God will trust you. Hallelujah. 
The more you guard the gates, especially the gates of the assembly, gates of the family, gates of people, those that may not know how to guard their own, the more you are helping, the more God will trust you. The more God will bless you. But you are a gatekeeper. Finally, every gatekeeper is able. There is no weak gatekeeper. How many of you would like to bring a man that is walking like this to be your gatekeeper in your house? You won't do that. Because if anybody comes in, he cannot even run after that person. Right? Every gatekeeper is a strong, able-bodied person. Man or woman. Nobody would like to bring a blind gatekeeper. How many of you would like a blind gatekeeper? So when you knock, you will say, where, where are you knocking from? How many of you would like that? You won't. How many of you would like a lame gatekeeper that can't walk? You won't. Every gatekeeper is able-bodied. And now let me ask you, spiritually, are you able-bodied? Are you able-bodied? If we send it up to 21 first, days fasting and prayer, how many of you will do? Uh -huh. You see where we are coming from now? Are you able-bodied? How much of the word of God do you have in your life? Do you read your Bible? If you do not read your Bible, you don't have the word of God in you, you are not able-bodied spiritually. You are not. How can you cast and bind if you are not able-bodied? How will you challenge devils and spirits if you are not able-bodied? Every gatekeeper must be able-bodied. Each time you dream and you dream that something is pursuing you and you wake up with a bad dream and you start to cry, you are not able-bodied. You should place your two feet on the ground and say, hey, you devil, don't ever come to my dream again. In Jesus' name, I banish you. That's when you are able-bodied. You know that you should not cry because somebody is harassing you. Why should you cry because some, some funny spirit is trying to harass you in your dream? You put your two feet down and say, look, I am standing on my feet and I don't want to be standing up for you again next time. If not, when I bind you, you will not be released until eternity. You get angry. You deal with it. But how can you do that if you don't know? If you don't have the word of God in you? If you don't have the courage of the Holy Spirit within you? Every gatekeeper must be able-bodied. So now I'm talking about spiritually. Being able-bodied spiritually. That's what I'm talking about. How many of you can say every day at least you read one verse of the Bible and keep it in your score? You memorize one verse and put it in your head. If you are not doing that, how can you be able-bodied spiritually? You will not be. You will not be. How can the Holy Spirit work with you? The only thing that activates the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is the Word of God. So you cannot be a gatekeeper unless you are meditating in the Word day and night. That's what it says to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says meditate in this day and night. Every gatekeeper is able to Everybody's person. Finally, as I'm going to conclude, I'm going to read from. Let me read this passage from verse number 24. It says, The gatekeepers were stationed on all four sides. All four sides. Mm. All four sides. When you are a gatekeeper, you check everywhere. I was once working as a security officer during the days of the uprising and, and protests that happened in Hong Kong 20, 19, 20, 20. All sides 
of the building that had entry points have got people walking around it, watching with touch light. What does that mean? Every side must be watched. If you watch one side and leave another side, you have a problem. Watch all sides. Watch the sides of yourself as a person. But watch for your brothers and sisters. Watch for your wife or your husband, your children. Watch for what you do that brings money to your life. Watch for your brethren in the fellowship. Watch for your ministry. I want you to know if you are a leader, you are an important gatekeeper. In this fellowship, we have many ministry leaders. As a leader, you are God's trusted gatekeeper. And remember this, every gatekeeper in that level will always have wounds. Mm -hmm. You will always have what? Wound. Somebody say wound. Wound. Uh -huh. wound make you cry. Make you unhappy. You will always get scratches. Because you have come to a position of a captain. When you read about the warriors of David, there are leaders of small groups, but there are captains, and then there are generals. When you become a leader of at least three people in your life, you are a captain. Let me repeat. If there are three people that trust you with their decisions, with what they do, at least three. Why did I say three? Jesus actually led how many people? Three. Peter, James, and John. They were the inner circle. If there are at least three people that trust you with decisions in their lives, you are a captain. And this means that from time to time, you are going to take a bullet for them. You are going to take some pain for them. You are going for them. And if it happens, please endure it. If you are a leader in any ministry, please remember what I'm telling you now. Somebody is going to make you angry. Somebody is going to say something that you don't like. But remember, you take that pain for them because you are a captain. Time is going to come in the future when they will understand and come to the same level and bear the same responsibility. But for now that you are that captain, the Most High is trusting you with their lives. So for every one of you that is a leader, an assistant leader in your ministry, you are a captain. Now, that does not mean that others should now leave the responsibility to them. No! No, every ministry leader and assistant needs a helper. No captain stands alone and continues to be a captain. He will die soon. <laughs> and don't be such a person that wastes your captain and destroys your general. That is a great sin before God. If you are one that will let your general, God will not be happy with you. Today, I bring this great word to you because I know that this will make you greater than you can imagine. First is for you to know areas of weaknesses, gates that you must guard. No matter how strong you are, you fail to guard your gates, you have a big problem. Two, guard the gates of just not you, but those around you. Remember that if God has trusted you with at least three people to lead a guide, you are a captain. And as a captain, I said, you're going to bear some pain. But that does not mean waste your life. 
stand for people, but know when to dodge the bullet. It's a very important training in the military. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Comrades, I greet you all. And I believe the Tete will say it. You all are all my comrades. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are all comrades in the army of the Father. And today I want you to know you are a gatekeeper. Keep your gate and you will fulfill your time. Hallelujah. Two prayer points that we are going to pray. First prayer. First prayer that I want us to pray is Psalm 127, verse 1. It's a very simple passage, and I'm sure you know it. Yes, declare it. Except, except the Lord builds. The builders are wasting their time in vain. And except the Lord watches over a city, watchman is staying awake for no use. So, our prayer now is going to be, Father, build my life. Protect my life, my family, my children, my ministry, my employment. Be the watch over me. Please, can we stand up as we pray? Hallelujah. We're going to pray.